this is a day where you get all of those new month messages march into your success march into your glory <laughs> the month of march is here ladies and gentlemen welcome to the morning brief i'm kairi okikulu and uh, kairi you forgot <laughs> to add march onto your victory mm. and indeed that's what we're doing <laughs> it's uh, the last day of the week but the yep. first day in the month of march um it's the best day yet and i'm sure you have it no other way welcome to the morning brief on channels television i am bukola Coca. Well, I'm Jeffrey Uzama. One of the things I would like you to do at the beginning of this month is to look back at January and February and do what we call time audits. And be honest, how much time did you spend doing what? Then you know where is what is where uh, and what is important to you at the end of the day. So if you do that a bit of a time audit, you'll be able to know, okay, I slept too much. I didn't sleep too well. I spent too much time in the in the office. I read this. I didn't read that. All of that. So when we do a time audit, you'll be able to tell yourself the truth because it's like economics. When you do that time audit, you tell you exactly what you love the most because that's what you give attention to. So I'm curious. Daddy. How do you do it then? So um, I mean, a lot of people forget things, right? So mm. for this week now, you know Monday came. Mm. All you can remember is that you were hustling for your 2K. <laughs> <laughs> 2.5, nice. Two five. Oh, no, it's 2.5. Two with dollar, with inflation. And now. all of that. It's not 2K. Maybe we so. round it up to 3K. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important, really, to, to take stock. And I think that's something we need to do from time to time. Take stock and plan appropriately. I know some people say maybe it's not in the culture, but it actually is mm. where people that plan they're just maybe too occupied or too preoccupied mm. with the 3K and you're not planning. So, yeah, march into your planning. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, somebody cut the time bug. You know, yesterday was my time to talk about time. Right. Jeffrey is talking about time audit today. So. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's quite important, absolutely, because, you know, by before you know, uh, March will be over. This is already mm -hmm. two months down. And... Uh, 10 months to go before you know we're in December and we're talking 2025 before in 2026 uh, well by next year politicians are not going to let us be so the elections start next year trust me well for politicians uh, they started already <laughs> they started already so <laughs> these guys keep to time so why shouldn't we keep to time yeah. yeah yeah so where did we learn to say happy new month by the way i was going to ask uh because in other parts of the world i doubt that the culture of happy new it's month is not really a thing it's not really a much. thing yeah I think we're greeting people as well, <laughs> particularly if you're from greeting my side. Greeting and grateful people. Yeah. Mm. If you're from my side, uh, hey, they greet you for everything. Everything. Yeah. Greet you for sitting down. Greet, greet you, you for, for standing, standing up. Greet, greet you for greet eating. Greet you for going. Greet you for sleeping. Greet you for making money. <laughs> greet you for literally <laughs> everything. So I, I think it's, it's just who we are, really. And I wish no you need to, Yeah. No need to be ashamed about that. That's who we are. So let's use that to our advantage because that's our edge, our comparative advantage really speaking of time guys mm. let's get into what we have for you on the exactly. show this morning we have planned the two hours we'll spend with you today in such a methodical way we have such a lineup for you so let's begin with the deadline for nigerians to link their national identity number that's the nin and the bank verification number the bvn to bank accounts we've seen confusion last minute rush and of course frustration that is a tale for a lot of people who are trying to beat that deadline more importantly wondering just how to go about it and whether or not if it makes sense in the first place so we ask those burning questions on your mind about the process on the show this morning and besides that we're going to be meeting a young nigerian who is making a name for herself in fashion and motion picture industry with unapologetic love for her african roots and culture she recently emerged winner of a keenly contested reality television show and she'll be sharing her amazing story well there you see her she's going to join us at some point on the show so get ready for that but whilst you're thinking about who exactly is that person yes that picture it's a familiar one <laughs> let's help you find ways to ease that menacing back pain for those of you who have it which by the way is increasingly becoming a concern both for the old and the young amazingly i don't know whether that's even the right word to use amazing or interestingly now by 2050 it is estimated that over, look at the number, 800 million people around the world are expected to suffer back pain. You heard it. Let's explore some safe exercise routines for you uh, so that you don't get uh, among that number, hopefully, shall we?
Absolutely, guys. And the thing is, literally everyone has that feeling. You just feel it from time to time. So stay with us. Plus, we're taking your comments from just about 7.20 on the show all through the program. So send them in on WhatsApp. Ah, we're here for you. Yeah, we're big mm -hmm. on that as well as on X, Facebook and Instagram. It's quite simple. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief. That's how to link up with us this morning. So march into the show. Let us amplify <laughs> your voices. If you've got interested videos, hey, send them our way. Let's help you amplify it. We are here for you. So, ladies and gentlemen and children, <laughs> young, old. It's Friday. It is Friday. Let's march on. Yeah, it's the morning brief. So, we're back with the top stories in just a few seconds. Stay with us right here. What a bumper package for you right here. Top stories on the brief, shall we? Another day, another protest. But this time, it's not about the security situation, really. It's over insecurity in Kaduna State, northwest Nigeria. As residents of Godingora community in Chikun local government area blocked the busy Abuja Kaduna Highway over the killing of one person and abduction of several members of the community by bandits. Now, the angry uh, resident, visibly angry, really, barricaded the highway with stones and human shields and it prevented outbound and inbound commuters from passing through that road and insist that the government must find a lasting solution to the lingering insecurity in the area. However, the intervention of a combined team of soldiers and other security operatives brought the situation under control. situation let's tell you that the senate has directed the police to recruit 10 from each local government area and it appears there'll be another round of police recruitment 7740 in all and that's if that directive by the senate uh, in the upper chamber is anything to go by. So the senators, essentially yesterday, they asked uh, the Police Service Commission and the Nigeria Police Force to recruit a minimum of 
10 candidates from each of the 774 local government areas in Nigeria and not on state's basis in its annual recruitment process. The upper chamber gave that directive during plenary after a motion moved by Senator Emmanuel Udende on the need to adhere to the federal character principle in the recruitment of constables into the Niger police force. We'll take a listen. Concerned that the recruitment on the state basis as against local government areas as initially contemplated and adopted will lead to disproportional and lopsided recruitment. Direct the Police Service Commission to, in conjunction with the Nigerian Police Force, to, rec to recruit a minimum of 10 candidates from each of the 774 local government councils in Nigeria. Meanwhile, operatives of the Niger Police Force and the FCT Command have paraded three suspects whose area of specialty is said to be car snatching and robbery in Abuja and environs. The Commissioner of Police, FCT, Mr. Ben Igwe, while parading the suspects, says operatives of the FCT Police Command on February the 16th, acting on credible intelligence, arrested three wanted car snatchers. And according to him, the suspects are members of a four-man gang who specialized in interstate car theft and snatching and come into the FCT, perpetrate their heinous act, and take the stolen vehicles to Port Harcourt to sell. I am glad to inform you today that due to our continuous efforts to fight crime and criminality in the FCT, without fear or favor, I am glad to show you that there are three people so far we have picked up who are involved in this business of robbery. Either they remove from where park or they rob it outrightly. We have three of them here. We have Junior David Godwin is here. We have Paul Taju and we have Alishi too. You can, if you go there, you will see their instruments, especially the one we describe as the master keys. About nine or ten of them were recovered from them. We have recovered five helots so far taken away by these hoodlums. They are all there, and several lot of them. The vehicles totaling are now nine we have so far recovered. Well, away from security now, another means of transport has been added to the Lagos mobility infrastructure. And the color this time is red. Well, the new train service, which is known as the Red Line, is the second to be launched in the state after the Blue Line, uh, which was commissioned last year. Well, the inauguration of the project, which was done by President Balatinibu, has been described as proof of a commitment to improve the nation's infrastructural development. I stand here very proud to say that the Lagos State Strategic Transport Master Plan that outlines what those integrated rail system stood for, which are six rail corridors, one Molo rail, 14 BRT corridors, and over 20 water routes on vast network of what is today the tiniest, smallest state in our country called Lagos State. We are indeed happy that that master plan is alive, is working, and all successive government, from my brother, Papa Tunuraji Fashola, to my other brother, Akim Meambode, and to our humble administration, have kept faith with it. For the first time in the history of Lagos, we have a system comprising and integrating three modes of transportation. The road, which is the BRT that we're using, the rail, which is a rail master transit program, and the waterways through the statewide ferry service. Every day, millions and millions of Lagosians cross this integrated urban transportation infrastructure. And the president, President Bola Tinubu, then sees the, the occasion to address the Nigeria Labour Congress on the protests and the ultimatum given uh, to the federal government, saying the union is not the only voice of Nigerians. I agree. Small glass will fight back. 
corruption will fight back. Uh, we will fight them to ruin. Corruption will go away. We have a governor in hope. And I'm standing before you, clinging to that hope, assuring you, my belief, that Nigeria will be out of economic problems. So you just need to persevere, work hard. Be assured. Allow me to throw a jab here. The labor union to understand that no matter how much we cling to our freedom and rights. To call four strikes within nine months of an administration is unacceptable. If you want to participate in the electoral process, wait until 2027. If not, maintain peace. They are not the only voice of Nigerians. Shortly after that speech and the inauguration of the Lagos Rail Project, the president then headed to Qatar on a two-day official visit said to be on the invitation of the Qatar Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. Well, the president arrived at 11.35 p.m. local time, and according to a statement by a special advisor and media and publicity to the president, Ajarin Gilali, the visit is to further strengthen cooperation between the two nations in several areas. Tinubu arrived in Doha, Qatar yesterday. Now, back home. If you're looking forward to the much-talked-about constitution review, then uh, you'll need to wait for over a year at least. And that's because the first draft report of the ongoing review will be ready in August 2025. And that's according uh, to the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Benjamin Kalu, who made this known at a news conference held at the instance of the House Committee on Constitution Review. And the committee at its inauguration uh, gave a 24-month timeline for the conclusion of the whole exercise. We are pushing to ensure that in our activities, that in no distance time, the first draft of the work we are trying to do on the Constitution will be ready. But this will be subject to the approval of the work done by the subcommittee. But let me mention that our target is that the first draft proposal of the Constitution will be out in August 2024, first draft. So our target is that transmission of bills to Mr. President for assets will take place 
August 2025. And with this, we are sure that our target to get this job tidied up in 24 months will be achieved if we send it to Mr. President by August of 2025. We are hoping that by December of 2025, we will have a constitution that is fully amended. Let's talk business now. The Central Bank of Nigeria says it is working with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to establish a comprehensive framework to address volatility in the foreign exchange market. Now, the CBN's Deputy Governor of Economic Policy, Mr. Mohamed Abdullahi, made this known uh, during a crucial strategic dialogue session with international investors. And according to him, the framework allows for identification of a cause of volatility and immediate intervention by the Apex Bank as a CBN. And out of the country, the Russian government says it will introduce a six-month ban on petrol exports from today. And that's to ensure essentially that it has enough fuel to meet domestic demand. And despite being the world's third largest oil producer, Russia has suffered sporadic fuel shortages since last summer amid high demand and repair works on its refineries. The wholesale gasoline prices have risen since the start of the year, a problem exacerbated by repeated Ukrainian drone attacks on oil refineries. Well, let's now talk sports. One of the biggest stories, France star Paul Pogba says he is sad, shocked and heartbroken after being banned from football for four years for a doping offence. So a 30-year-old Juventus midfielder was actually personally or provisionally suspended in September after a drug test found elevated levels of testosterone in his system. But Pogba says he believed that the verdict was incorrect and he would never knowingly or deliberately dope while adding that he would appeal. Well, anti-doping prosecutors had called for the four-year ban to be imposed on the former Manchester United midfielder who tested positive following Juventus' opening match to the, of a talent Serie A season against Udinese on August the 20th during Hitch, which he was an unused substitute. So, yeah, now the controversy for Pogba will, of course, uh, continue to follow that story. But that's not all making the rounds of this morning. Let's now head onto the social media space and find out what you are saying about the major trends and the top stories uh, this morning. Bukala joins me. Uh, Bukala looking sporty this morning. Uh, just as you are, uh, I, I decided to go your way by looking for my tennis. Um, and I got my... <laughs> So she haunts I me with that I finally found term. my tennis. She haunts me with that Not as term. fine as yours, though. I, 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 she just does that. She calls it tennis. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we called it in I secondary know. school. So she deliberately just tries to taunt me uh, with that particular term. But uh, major stories making the rounds uh, this uh, morning. Quite a Bukala. number, yeah. Karadi. And, you know, going through some of the contributions of our esteemed viewers this morning, yeah. they're unexpected and profound, giving cause for reflection. Let's head right into them. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about uh, the charge of the president to the NLC yesterday when he said four strikes in one year of the lifespan of an administration Less is too much. Year, so Starting with Dr. Constant, he says, labor is the peaceful voice. Listen to them. The other voices are not so peaceful. There you go. So those are some of the things you are saying uh, right there. And let us know. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief. That is a handle uh, to use so we can get your thoughts out there. But that's not the only one that we have for you. You see this one from uh, Dagunduro Olalikon saying, at this critical time, the so-called labor union leadership needs to support the government of the day in turning the fortune of the country around, not calling for what he describes as incessant strike or protest. And Leader Kraft says, obviously, which proportion of Nigerians are they really fighting for? Who has their struggles benefited in recent times? They've lost the narrative of being at the side of the people to being at the side of politicians and political parties. Well, see what I said about reflection? Yeah. Mm. So that there you see. Yeah. That's the one from uh, Leader Kraft. Let's go to the next uh, post on this. Uh, I, I know there, there have been mixed feelings about the president's statement yesterday. But it looks like we're increasingly seeing more people saying well maybe what the president says makes sense but of course some other people saying you have a freedom uh, to protest right uh, to express yourself but again another person and this one is uh, frederick says he's very correct 
Labor represents less than 20% of Nigerian workers and even less of Nigerians. They cannot presume to speak for the generality of Nigerians. The numerous uncalled for strikes have achieved what really your thoughts. You know, right Apokade, recall there was a time you drew my attention to the number of unions registered under the organs of labor and you'll be you know quite surprised at some of the unions that you find registered so labor in, is indeed representing a vast m majority of nigerians remember there is a an association of conductors that oh, yes. you pointed out to oh, me yeah. you know as well said them. under some the labor you will union. not even expect really. yeah so uh, labor is fully representative uh, this one is from g pogsy and uh, he says is there a particular time frame for when to declare a strike why don't you listen to the cry of the people and see how you can bring down the food prices? All righty. Instructive question so there. So those are, those are issues that we'll, of course, be uh, looking at on the show this morning. But also the president during his speech talked about corruption. You heard that earlier on on our top stories, uh, saying how corruption is fighting back, but they will fight back as well. And a leader craft at, at Mayocon on X says this, very good and impressive speech that's coming from the president. Thanks for the great efforts. Corruption must be fought till it's ruined. The ruination of a corrupt is at hand. May your consents. We hope not, and it certainly will not happen. The other, uh, the opposite of which part, that which is part the do expectation you hope of not? Nigeria. Oh, I, the ruination of corruption. Yeah. I thought I had the ruination of the nation. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Corrupt, right. All right. So the next one is from Isa Aliu. And Isa says, this is motivational. And I hope PBAX, that's President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, will work, walk the talk. Nigeria needs a leader ready to take the nation to enviable heights. May God bless our dear nation. So uh, there you go. Some of the comments on the president's speech, but keep them coming. Hashtag CTV uh, morning brief. I know it's always a controversial issue, fighting corruption. And some people say, well, looking words to begin with. Let's talk about corruption in governance and deal with it even close to you, really. Uh, but that's not all. There's this uh, conversation about the I want a directive, really, uh, on uh, the price of, is it? cement essentially so uh, president Tinubu directing then go to others to revert is it to old price and you can see uh, this one from wahala man i hope your post is not wahala this morning wahala man says why not open the borders to foreign competitors let's see if Dengote and Bois will survive well your favorite says you can't tell them to do that if they will run in loss well run at a loss I'm sure he means fix the economy and things will balance itself it's not about commanding other progress business well true to um, uh, Wahala man really uh, the factors of production will not bend to presidential directives, so it's inadequate really to tell uh, the manufacturers, you know, to revert to the old price when the realities, uh, you know, are not as uh, friendly. So we need to really break this down. But well, you see, Francis Igbo says if they bring down the price of cement just because of what he said, then I'll take it that they intentionally inflated the price of cement. So that's like a, a controversy or like a dilemma, I should say, right there. But Binance yet again. All right, it's let's go to one. Binance now, very quickly. Dr. Olawale Ogunlano says, I hope we know Binance is not the problem, though if we have an economy that produces for its consumption and for export, instead of relying solely on imports, our currency will have strength against any currency. When we're, do when we're done beating around the bush, we will face the problem. Ah, so Binance yet again, of course, is on the news. And we understand that even more uh, officials or more of these uh, crypto platforms might be called in to have a conversation. Is do you need to open your books? We need to get more details. We've seen this happen in other clients. But of course, the process needs to be followed to the letter according uh, to law. So that is not the only thing. Yes, it's a big deal. But remember, Governor Alex Oti had an interview on our sister program, Politics Today, yesterday. He said a number of things. And one of the things he said is that the federal government printed too much money. We've heard that a lot, but then he re-echoed uh, that particular point and I think he's trying to link that to the current economic situation, particularly the freefall of the Naira. You see Mr. Bucci Anthony saying, that's too bad, and we're not even seeing the printed notes. <laughs> you have to say that. Well, the notes are not in the ATMs anymore, Kadi. I wonder if you've noticed that as well. There is a second exchange rate besides the exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar. That's a POS. 20,000 Naira to 400 Naira. 
that's sad and uh, you know that should get the attention of the cbn also this is from uh, maji idris entire policy seems towards crippling our economy and return to import dependent economy how else can you explain and he lists it gross naira under valuation Floating of Naira, 22.75%, huge increase in interest rates, excessive printing of the Naira. The above won't enable recovery. There you have it. Whoa. Too much so, money chasing too few goods. Absolutely. We've seen the inflation figure. So those are the issues that uh, were you talking about. We'll go to a quick break now, and when we return, we'll begin with a big one for the day. N-I-N, B-V-N, those are the buzz terms. Add bank accounts to it and withdrawal ban. Yeah, that gets a lot of people panicking. So all of the confusion, the anxiety, we'll deal with that on the show this morning. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Break. to the morning brief and of course we now switch gears to talk about this issue of bvn and nin we're having a chat just before we came on and uh, we're talking about the multiple ids we need to have uh in nigeria from your driver's license to your voter card to your international passport to your bank account bvn to nin the list goes on and people are wondering why can't we just have an integrated system well the experts are here to answer all of that question and you know the deadline uh from the apex bank is today okay that was last month by today if your bvn is not linked to your nin um that post of no credit will be on your account most likely so you cannot do any form of transaction and it's going to be a disturbing one for a lot of people because we have over maybe 150 people who are active in the banking system and what we know from the records we have successfully linked maybe about 60 million so we're talking about almost 80 million people in the question whether it has increased between yesterday and now we do not know so it's a major crisis that uh, we have to uh, look at so today today like today march the first everybody should have been linked nin and bvn should have been linked whether you're a tier one user or a tier two or tier three well, let me not talk too much. Let me come with to the guests. <laughs> but just a foundation. We have joining us on the program Ayoande Adalimo, the founder and CEO of Wave 5 Wireless. Thank you so much for coming on the program. It's a pleasure being here. 
Um, well, I try to paint a picture of what we're dealing with, which mm. is the numbers are quite huge. Uh, when I did a little bit of check, it's about the fact that some people may have had their mean, uh, have their BVN, but it's not linked and all of that. So maybe as an opener, help us understand uh, why this is almost like a repetition, because that's why people are complaining about. But the banks are saying it is not a repetition, it's just that you have these independent numbers, but they are not linked. So the, the banking system needs its own um, form of identity, right? Every organization needs their own form, form of um, creating an identity for you. The challenge we have is that there is no central identity. So the BBN is where the bank identifies your account number and who owns it. However, if I don't, if I can open an account, whether I'm a Nigerian or whatever nationality I am, and I, no one can tell who I am, identify where I live, where I come from, that's a challenge. Which is why the BVN must be linked to your national identity number. Mm. So we can tell who exactly has this account number. Why people are complaining um, is because one, the, the process of doing, of doing this linking is not driven by technology. It's, um, most banks are saying you have to come to, my, to the closest branch to you to do that. That's cumbersome. The second reason is people feel, why don't I just have my name? Why do I need a BBN? If I have my name and I have an account with you, you already identify who I am. But BBN is not just for identity, it's also for all these reasons, um, tracing transactions within the banking network. Well, well for me, I'm wondering um, if this multiplicity of identities that we have, and that was the first question I asked you know, mm. before we came on, is in line with international best practices, you know, as is it obtainable all over the world, or do we have an excessive love for <laughs> gathering identities here in Nigeria? So I don't think, uh, well, multiplicity is m maybe the right word in the context of what we're talking about. Everywhere else, identities are linked to a national database. Here, we don't have that. And so when okay. we say multiplicity, you, you're, you're correct. I mean, Kyle said duplicity earlier on. Because it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not linked together. Now, that's the biggest challenge we have. If, um, if you're probably in the US, you have a social security number, and then you have your driver's license. If I pick your driver's license, I can tell who you are, where you live, where all the places you've lived. That's not possible in Nigeria. If you pick my driver's license, you, that's all. You're only on the Federal Road Safety Database, and that is it. You're not, I can't tell what state you're from, I can't tell when you were born, I can't tell nothing about you. Mm. So the fact that all of these identities are not linked to a national database is the biggest challenge. In security, in planning, forecasting, economy, it is a big challenge that we don't have all of that linked together. And you have to maybe understand where I'm coming from. Mm. For a lot of Nigerians, the cities has not duplication, but duplicity. Yeah. Mm. Because they wonder why do I, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? I have a name and a BV and I'm the same person. Why do I have to now link my name with my bank account mm -hmm. when I just do my thinking? Yeah. You know, all of that, they wonder why do I, it's a no-brainer, right? I am the person, I was registered. I expect that these things will happen seamlessly without ha me having to go to the bank. Have you been to the bank of late? It's total it's, chaos. It's chaos, it's chaos. Yeah, you might wait three, four hours yeah. just for it. I mean, the process is not as tedious, but the waiting. The wait times. Wait time. Yeah. If you have to do it online for banks, we'll give you that option. You have to generate your, and these are two things, by the way. There's the NIN SIM linkage. Mm -hmm. There's the NIN BVN linkage. Linkage. Yeah. So if you want to do the NIN BVN bank account linkage, you have to generate uh, this uh, virtual NIN. Sometimes the network doesn't go through. You try the application. So. It can be much of a headache. Can you expect that? Ah, wait a minute, I, I didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just trying to be a law-abiding citizen. So really, uh, we've been at this for so long. The NIMC came up uh, late 2000s or, or thereabouts, mm -hmm. and you expect that we've had a lot of time to be able to, you know, fix to get this, this right. whole thing. So tell us from the back end, why is it difficult really? Maybe we can begin to understand why is it really difficult on the back end? So, um, I think there is, um, well, maybe I should use the right word. I think we're just lazy. 
Technology makes things pretty easy. Technology brings convenience to the table. So as a Nigerian, the most important number I should have is my name. Whether I am giving birth to today or I happen to now become a Nigerian after, I should have my name. And once I have that, whatever service I want to access that requires me to have some kind of identity with that service, which is, which makes sense, is the first thing that service should do is to call up your name. And that database is there, that system is there. The um, National Identity Card Management um, um, Agency has that possibility. You can go online and actually collect your APIs through their own API and call up people's names. And there's a payment for you. For every call up, I think you pay 50 naira for every call up. So what is happening is that because there's no form of enforcement or penalties, people are just jettisoning that or maybe that fee is too high because if I want to do a million call-ups, that's 50 million there. And so I'll think as a technology person, do I need to do this? Let me just decision that because there's no penalty, there's no law that says it is a must. So that's a challenge we have. It's, I think we're just being lazy. The technology is there, it is not difficult. So that's number one. Number two is on the government side, and I'm happy that Engineer Bissou Ekoka is there now. I, I know she's gonna do quite a number of things with um, improving and scaling up the infrastructure. The infrastructure is a problem. The contractors they give these things to, I don't know what their biggest challenge is. You don't love the country enough, or you don't you want to make, um, so much money. In Yoruba land where I come from, they call it area jekwa jude, right? Like, like so much profit that it blinds you. The servers that the NIN and all of these databases sit, when you see a deluge of, of um, transactions on those servers, what kind of they said now happens? It crawls and slows down because there's a limit to how much you can access that database. Sorry, you said transactions. Yes. What kind of transactions are you talking oh, about? So, so when you try to call up a name or try to um, search for my name, that's a transaction going okay. on, not necessarily monetary trans okay. transaction. Once that is happening, the infrastructure we have on the, either the cloud service providers mm -hmm. or even our local co-location service providers is such that it's expandable. It just understands that there are more people coming on this. But what happens, what we've seen repeatedly, is that the databases are stored on very limited servers. And so it cannot take, sometimes when there's a surge, it really cannot take that surge. And then you hear issues like network is down. No, network is not down. We don't have enough capacity to take a lot of people at the same time. And that is the problem with the contractors that they've contracted all of these things to. Why can't we think of a, a solution where it is flexible and expandable? If one million people want to connect, it expands. Um, I don't want to mention the names of these um, super giants, but the cloud service providers have that, that opportunity. You want to ensure that at any point in time, whether it's one person or one million people, your servers can take that traffic. And once the traffic reduces, your, your, your costs and your skill goes back to normal. And that's how, that's the best practice globally. But we don't see that with, with government infrastructure, whether it is driver's license or whether it is lean, whether, whatever it is, you find that situation where when people want to access and they are more than 10, 15, 30, 100, the server is down. It is because it is not hosted properly and there's not much capacity to take care of situations where there's a surge or a demand. It's almost embarrassing what you said for it a nation. Right? It's, it's like I'm listening, I, I want to be sure I understand mm -hmm. and I get what you're saying. And I yeah. think I do, and I'm feeling embarrassed as a country that we couldn't get this. Uh, so maybe the authorities will be able to respond to what you have said uh, because we are not the technical people. Yeah. Uh, but now that we have this issue on our hands, I, I gave you the data. Almost 80 million people are at risk of this whole, you know, personal credit or debits on this account. And so, how, with the situation you describe, how can we manage this potential crisis? Oh, no, there's no management. It's, 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 it's going to be chaotic. People are going to get stuck. Um, but again, what have I, what have I been doing in, since last, um, since 2023 December till now? What have I been doing? Why are my names not linked to my VVN? Why are my SIMs not linked to my... So I can understand those who use MiFi and all of these devices. There are about 12 million, there are about of them. And sometimes you forget that that's 
um, SIM on your MiFi or your dongle is not linked to your to your name. I can understand that. But if I use a regular phone and I use my bank account, why have I not linked it? Again, I said earlier that we're just a, a we're just lazy as a people. Things that should be done the proper way, we don't want to follow processes until the last minute before we start running Helter Skelter. So I really have no pity for 80 million people except those who are um, disabled, to handicapped, cannot, old, or whether they're too young. But they have, sorry for cutting, yeah. just to answer, there are people that were saying, I think the tier one or tier three users, I can't remember the tier, yeah, so they were saying that uh, they were not aware because when the banks reach out to them, mm -hmm. uh, said, okay, you have this name, you have this BV, and the problem is that it's not linked. So where did that miscommunication come from? Oh, so, so for the banks, I think the banks should um, show their responsibility. Once I open an account, uh, the CBN circular says whether it's a tier one or a tier two account, the, the minimum account should have a NIN or BVN. So once I open a wallet, I mean, the, the tier one accounts are like wallets, and my phone number is my wallet account. Once I do that, if my, if my, the first thing the banks should check is, is this phone number linked? Is it linked to the SIN data, database? If it's linked to the NIN database, then generate a BBN for this person and link it. Send an SMS to the customer to now com to complete that process. It is not rocket science. Again, laziness. But you leave accounts for months, transactions will be going on, and then deadline days, you start coercing the customers to come and do what technology should have enabled you to do a long time ago. So let's assume that the servers don't can't take a lot of uh, traffic at the time you want to do it. Where is the log that says, oh, I have 20 customers who this has not happened with, and I need it to happen within this period of time? Again, we don't follow processes, we're not we're very complacent, we don't take cognizance of the fact that these are serious security um, implications. Um, we, don't, we just don't care. We just do things. Um, my people call it anyhowness, until a deadline comes or until something very important is happening and then everybody starts rushing. So for the banks, you blame the banks. The customer cannot know as much as the CBN regulation as the bank. I wouldn't know until you tell me and you make me do the things that need, needed to be done. If I open a wallet, I'm opening my phone number. It should be linked to my name. If it's not, then the customer cannot use that wallet at all. Tell the customer, go to your name, and once the customer does that, link it to a BVN. You own the BVN infrastructure, right? So you link it. Or prompt the customer to link it, dial star, 111 hash, and then link your BVN. It's technology, easy to be done. But because the person sitting there has some other things to do, he abandons that, and it piles up, and it becomes a challenge. Now, you say that um, we don't follow processes. And you know that is also a huge factor that is responsible for where we are today. Yeah. And I also wonder that in relation to that, if the fact that those in authorities also do not make processes efficient, you know, that's also part of the reason why we're here today. Yeah. I say that because you know the NIN SIM part of this narrative is mm -hmm. also a concern where security um, is the issue. Um, the former minister of communication had cause to respond to questions during the kidnap of the Nabia sisters mm. about why the name sim policy was not working and he said that it was working but that the security agents uh, did not request often enough for the information i wonder what part of the data protection guidelines make it you know a problem of bureaucracy for security agents to access uh, this data in order to check uh, to fight crime there's a lot of complexity going on. As far as technology is concerned, it is not difficult. Um, as we speak, I, I think that we are putting the cat before the horse as far as the name seem is concerned. Satellite phones are not affected today. Satellite phones still have a couple of months before they are affected. Now, if you have a satellite phone, you can register up to nine satellite phones on a name. So imagine kidnappers having access to satellite phones and we can't trace them. And that's what most of them use. So if I were the government, the first level, the first level, I just actually, any satellite gadget that is linked to communication, satellite phones, satellite communication gadgets, should be linked to NINs immediately. Before we even come to the normal phone calls, 
Mm. Right? Because people wonder, so someone makes a call and is a kidnapper, why can't you trace them? Because it's in a satellite phone. Oh. And now satellite phones have up to April or thereabout before they are they have to comply. So the satellite phones are off the radar. They're off the radar, they're off the radar. They're not collected to your NIN database right now. And they have up to April to do that. As far as kidnapping is concerned and the NIN, the, so the NIN is not a, an all-in-one um, sword that solves the problem. It needs to be coordinated. So as an example, I have my NIN. Is my NIN linked to my postal address as an example? Is it linked to my um, house? Do I have a verification for my identity up to where I live? So if I say NIN, the NIN is as lame as the card you're carrying around. It is just an identity. But can we now activate that identity? If I have a NIN, do I know that this NIN is linked to this postal code? And this postal code is linked to this area. And on this area, there's a under code for this street. And on this street, there are codes for every single building on that street. And every landlord has an under code, an extension of the NIN. So if I enter the NIN somewhere, I know that this NIN belongs to this street, this street, and then it lives in this house, and the house is owned by this person. That is when your NIN becomes a very powerful tool to fight crime. As it is, it can't fight crime. It is just as blank as that paper or that plastic you carry around. What it would do now is all these linkages will ensure that we have a central database. But what does my central database do for me if NIPOS is not there, if the primary health care is not there? It is just it goes beyond just linking lean and lean and, and BVN. It has to be a robust infrastructure, which is why I was happy when they moved away from the digital economy to the Ministry of Interior. Because it is a national planning, national security issue. And you know it's at the heart of this really, when you think about the idea, it's a brilliant one if we implement it yeah. very well. And you wonder again that this is a country where you have brilliant techies. I mean, we have unicorns literally that started in this country mm -hmm. and they're doing great things. And then you weigh that, uh, why are we lacking infrastructure as we ought to have for a government-backed agency? Yeah. I mean, if it's an individual, you can say you're looking for funding, right? But this is government. Mm -hmm. You expect that we channel a lot into that. So uh, let's talk about this infrastructure matter because yeah. we're, we're what, uh, over 100, I think the NIMS database has 104 million on it yeah. and I, I imagine that's not even exhaustive there'll probably be a few a million yeah. that will be added to it I don't know if we need sensors at this rate <laughs> that one because <laughs> <laughs> some say that may suffice but that's not the point here so we know that we have a lot of pressure yeah right hundreds of millions or less than 200 million people so why why would you say it's difficult again to give adequate infrastructure to it but more importantly, how can we begin to ensure that we have the right infrastructure to handle that kind of pressure so we can get the best out of this for security, economic planning, and so much more? I think, I think Engineer Bisu Ekoka is taking the right steps. Knowledge is very important, which is why you see her. She's in India today. She's in Canada tomorrow. She's going all over the world and looking at best practices. Yes, we have giants, tech giants here. But you see, the civil service is a different ballgame entirely by itself. And our civil servants have not been motivated to work enough. We don't even have enough civil servants. Uh, our cost of governance is very low. Mm. It Aras, is not. Our RSI report is, is smiling at you <laughs> right no, now so, and so shaking its head. Our RSI report actually speaks to efficiency. So if I'm a civil servant, as an example, and I have KPI set for me, and I know that, as an example, it, is not, it just goes beyond registering one million people. If I register one million, and I see how active that need has become, and I can see on my database, there's NIPOS, there's primary healthcare center, all of these things, at the end of the year, my bonus is this much. The civil servants will be, will be automatically rigid. But you see, we take the people angle out of this whole thing, and just focus on technology alone, or policies, or laws. The people that are driving this, what part do they play in ensuring that this is driven properly? So for us to come back to the question of infrastructure, I have given this contract to someone, and I'm a civil servant sitting now in my office. This guy has billions of naira to do this infrastructure, and I'm just receiving my 30K, my 50K a month. I'm human. 
Mm. I'll just watch you. Mm. And pos most possibly, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll frustrate you. Which is why you find the issues where sorting happens, bribery and corruption happens, because the contractor wants his things done. If we need to get this done, we need to bring um, some kind of knowledge, technology into the civil service, rejig it, carry the people along. The infrastructure is not a challenge as far as Nigeria is concerned. We have the co-location centers. Um, I don't know if I can mention names on this show, but all of the big boys are here, on, especially along the shore of, uh, of Lagos here. They have their huge co-location co centers. So infrastructure really is no longer a challenge. We have thousands of thousands of kilometers of fiber in this country. The, the challenge we have is the people challenge. And I'm happy with what I see with the NSA now. There's a lot of coordination going on. And that coordination will have to extend to infrastructure and databases. Because for security operatives to really operate and pinpoint where people are, they need the databases from, from NCC, from NIMC, from everybody. And I, I see that coordination going, going to happen. But we must deal with the people part of things. If people are not going to sit up from their table and get things done, nothing will happen. If you send a memo to someone and you tell the person, oh, I need this done in two hours, and two weeks later it's not done, who calls? What penalties are there? Or even before penalties, what incentive is there for the person to make this work? You can't just say security, security, security. You also need to make the person see, I am a huge part of this, which is why our president is saying we should recite the pledge. It, it is to my country. What incentive do I have to ensure that my country works? The civil service must see that, and they must be made to see the benefits of being Nigerians, being working for Nigerians. When I'm done from the civil service, what happens to me? Am I abandoned? That people part of this entirety. So technology is great, but the people part mm -hmm. of this whole thing, we must not throw to the, throw away. So maybe, uh, maybe you 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 may be indirectly speaking for labour. We're asking for a million naira as <laughs> as a minimum wage indirectly. But I don't know what you're going to propose. Uh, uh, some of the incentives that you're talking about, but there is also the argument of some people are saying. You knew what this space holds before you went in. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking for what is not available? I knew what channels can offer me, mm -hmm. and I knew what I can offer channels. And I wrote a letter, I said, I would like to work with you, and they made a proposal. We negotiated, and we're here. So I'm very clear on why I came and what is obtainable. Yeah. Now, if I want more, that's a different kettle of fish. So that's sometimes the argument. So I want you to just suppose that with reforms on one hand and the other fact that you already knew that this is what the space is obtainable the contractor is going to see those billions and you will not see it because it's his job so unfortunately we cannot do that with channels and the civil service <laughs> no. so but we need but that's what needs to happen in the civil service the challenge we have now is that our civil service is driven largely by nepotism and the man no man syndrome have, have you ever seen an ad for employment in the civil service I have never come across one. And yet people work there, people are employed every single day. The efficiency we need to bring in the civil service needs to follow the way channels also does things. We need to have chief executives that ensure that a civil servant has KPIs and bonuses. We need to bake a bigger pie. Let us not, let us not kid ourselves. The potentials for this country to become a trillion, two trillion dollar economy is there. There are too many low-hanging fruits, which is why I wonder what our ministers are doing. There are too many low-hanging fruits that if I, as an example, I'm a minister today, I sit with my palm sets in my ministry, the first thing we'll look at is where are the low-hanging, where are the potentials to generate enough revenue for ministries that generate revenue, uh, mines and steel, digital economy. These are the low-hanging fruits. If we achieve this milestone, let's say $100 billion within the first year of our, this is the bonus, and I will go to the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Committee to say, okay. I'm promising this to my, to my farm sex and to my civil servants. We want to achieve this revenue from our ministry this year. If we achieve it, a percentage of this goes back to my civil servants. That is the way we need to begin to think. We need to stop thinking as civil servants as our, as our slaves. A lot of civil servants will like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not about, about one million. It's not, it's not even about the minimum wage. I think, it's, I think it's embarrassing and it's again lazy to think in terms of minimum wage. What is the total number of civil servants we have in Nigeria? 
if you look at it critically. How about the millions who are not civil servants? I think we need to have a minimum environment for productivity. That's what we need. And within that minimum environment for productivity, the engine room is a civil service. Mm. If the engine room, which is the civil service, is not driven by, by technology and driven by chief executives who understand that the, these people need to be taken care of, inflation is soaring. We're, we're getting close to 40%. No, the seller, it. Te, yeah, well, food inflation. Food inflation. Food inflation. Food inflation. Food inflation. Yeah. Okay. Food is the biggest thing that we spend money yeah. on in this okay. country. And our civil service is still earning what they're earning, and there are no buffers, no bonuses. Reject the entire system. Bring cheap executives who can say, I need to generate this amount of money. If I generate it, everybody gets this bonus. And it's cascaded all the way from the top to the bottom. Civil servants will wake up. Let me use NIPOS as an example. That is the biggest low hanging fruit in the Ministry of Digital Economy. Logistics, moving goods from one place to the other, is. So why, why don't you have a post office box? So if I register my name, my name is tied to my post office box, so automatically I have a post, post office box. Every government interaction is sent to that post office box, and it's digital. All I need to do is enter my code, either I go there physically, or it comes into my box. Um, so this. every Nigerian will have a PO box. So if I actually spend 500 a year to have a PO box that is digital, that takes all of your correspondences, all of your shipping, 500 naira a year times 60 million Nigerians, who would need this service? What do you think will happen? NIPOST is the only organization in Nigeria today that can do proper verification of addresses. They know everywhere. Okay. I use oh, NIPOST. I, like, I like the idea. Yes. I use NIPOST. They might come for you after this. So <laughs> I, I, I hope you're, you're, you're ready for this. But do you, do, you, do you suggest that they push the deadline? I know that we do a lot of things last minute. Yeah. Mm. Both the organizations, and you referenced mm. some of them, and the people. But mm -hmm. would you say maybe we shift the deadline? So, no. There are security implications to this, and people who are criminals are waiting for that deadline to be, to be moved. People have lost money this morning as we speak because nothing is linked. And one boy will just call you and say, I'm calling from FCM, FCMB and uh, you need to do something, you need to link your name. Mm. And the person clicks a link and, and their entire life savings is gone. So we cannot push the deadline. Someone will be kidnapped as we speak. Well, again, that speaks to the fact that there are satellite phones those guys are using, and we have to wait till April to solve that to solve that issue. We cannot keep pushing deadlines. Lives are lost every day. Oh. Businesses are affected. Money is being lost. Hmm. How long do we want to keep pushing deadlines for people who are lazy? So, for the legit, they'll be entering the system as um, a new um, new data, so to speak, because yes. they have missed out on this opportunity. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's quite insightful. That's the only option of uh, We wish we could continue talking because there's a lot you have to offer. And, I'm, and, I, and I hope and pray, not just hoping, I'm also praying that the people in authority are listening to you because you have just put out myriads of solutions or loads of solutions, if I may say. Ayoande uh, Adalamo, uh, founder and CEO of Wave 5 Wireless, thank you so much for your insight you, on this. Of thank course, you for having we'll me. We'll check in on you uh, as much as possible to bring us this because we need to trace everybody and track everything. Yeah, There's no hanging food. This night post. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a conversation for this, and I'm sure uh, it's a developing conversation. So go get your SIM. Okay, I don't know what that SIM you see after. And BBN, NIN, linked, so that you don't get caught up. Well, when we come back, we'll talk to that reality star we've been talking about. Join us again on the program. We'll be right back.
let's have that conversation, shall we? You may have seen her on a reality TV show, Played the Game, got a lot of people talking. In fact, some have credited some of the high points of that show to her. You hear that name, Tolu. Yeah, Tolu Lokwe Ekundari from the Trust reality TV show is our guest on the morning brief this morning. Hi, Tolu. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back here we will say Tolu. But they say Tolu a lot, and even sometimes you say Tolu, so I'm trying to, you know, just cue behind that. But Tolu, it's good to have you on the Morning Brief. How are you? I am great. It's so amazing to be here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, someone had to say, I mean, the energy, the vibe is just yeah. top notch from Tolu. So <laughs> I, I want to know, please, how, how do you keep that energy up? We'll, we'll talk about the show, but I just want you to give us some advice because we need our energies to always be up. How do you keep your energy up, Tolu? Because you're quite energetic. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I like to call myself the Energizer Bunny because I just remind myself that every day is a blessing. Like every single day, we're not guaranteed. So what you make out of the day is what you're going to grab from it. So I just try to keep the energy up, stay excited, stay positive, and just get everything that I have coming for me. That's that's really my secret. Fantastic. So we'll take a cue from that, okay? That's straight from Tolu. If you want to keep your energy up, that's what to do, right? So let's talk about the show. Uh, you've gotten so much support from Nigerians. Yes, there's, there's, there's been the controversies naturally. That's what you get from reality TV shows, right? But you're one of the characters that really made that show uh, worth watching there was a lot of controversy around your character the way you played the game you were the player so walk us through uh you know your your mindset approaching the trust show and eventually lasting up until the very end even though you are amidst what a lot of people will describe as foes but you play that game yeah so I went into the trust, like we, again, when we went in there, we didn't know anything about the show. We didn't know the concept. We didn't even know what really anything was gonna be about. So I went in blind. The only thing I knew was that the call to action from the, like the ad that I, I answered was, this is an opportunity to win a life changing amount of money. That was my call to action. Life changing amount of money, I said, I like life-changing amounts of money. <laughs> so I went in there with the mindset that, well, th there's, there's money on the line that can change your life. Grab it by any means necessary, grab it. And so when we got there and they explained the premise of the show and they told us, oh, congratulations, you're all winners. Everybody is gonna share $250,000. As exciting as that may seem to some people, <laughs> I went in there for a life-changing amount of money. And I said to myself, I'm walking out with as Which much money as possible. <laughs> and I was, I was true to my word. Okay, uh, for those people who haven't seen the show, uh, because you say you went here, you didn't see, you didn't know much about the show. Now you've been on the show uh, and you've made this impact, uh, making Nigeria proud. So walk us through, I think it's called a game of greed, all of that. Uh, so walk us through. <laughs> so walk people who haven't seen the show, who have no idea what is Trust TV reality show, because uh, right here, they're used to the Big Brother Nigeria, Big Brother Africa and all of that. So what's, what's the format of the show? What exactly are you gaming for and all of that? Okay, so... You know how here in Nigeria, Big Brother Nigeria is huge, right? And with Big Brother Nigeria, there can only be one winner. So the way the trust, the a game of greed is set up is when we all walked in, there were 11 of us. We all walked in and the host said, congratulations, you're all winners. Just like that. As soon as we walked in, we're all winners. We're all going to share in an equal amount of $250,000. But the catch is in order to get your share of the $250,000, you have to make it to the end. So throughout the experience, there is an opportunity, there will be multiple opportunities to cast the vote. Now, you don't have to cast the vote, it's optional. But if you cast the vote and somebody is eliminated, then they lose on their share of the trust, the $250,000. And the more people are eliminated, the, the more the more money you have in your pocket because it's less people to share it with. So that's the caveat. You don't have to vote, but there is a major incentive to vote. 
And so as the game continues, there's also that paranoia because it just takes one single vote. So if, again, it started, out, it started with 11 of us. So if 10 out of the 11 decide, all right, I don't want to vote, love everybody, let's just share. And one single person says, I, I don't like that person. I'm going to cast a vote. That one vote now becomes the majority and whoever they voted for is eliminated, just like that. So it, you also have to trust like, okay, these people say that they're not gonna vote. Am I sure that they're not gonna vote? Because if there is a tie, like let's say there's one and one, then nobody gets eliminated at all. But if there's just one single person or somebody gets a majority of the votes, then they're eliminated. So it just like, there's that paranoia in there. Like, should I cast the vote to try to save mm. myself? Should I not cast the vote? Can I trust that these people are not going to cast the vote? It's just, there's so many places that your mind is going all at once. Wow. Amazing. Um, it, it sounds like, okay, <laughs> amazing is not a word. It sounds like walking on eggshells, actually. I, I like the Literally. way you said um, Niger. You know, you said it with a Niger tone, and I'm sure that you can still call your name Tolu, not Tolu, as it's called in the U.S. Um, now, this is a difficult part, Tolu. The name of the show itself is Trust, and then it has a tagline, A Game of Greed. So that, that's a paradox in the first place. And you explaining it now, you know, tells us that, you know, uh, the, the mindset of the organizers playing on human frailties, either it's greed, betrayal, uh, and distrust. Uh, what do you think about that objective, um, you know, based on the morality of it? Honestly, I feel like, and, and this is what I've learned from my experience. We all come from different walks of life. And the walks of life that we've gone through, it shapes how we kind of approach the world and how we think about things. So for example, on the, if you watch the show, you'll see that there are certain individuals who their trust is given. And it has to, it, it's just given automatically and it has to be taken away. Whereas there's other individuals like myself where our trust is earned. I don't trust people on the offs, like just, just on initial, like, oh, I trust you wholeheartedly. It's earned, like you have to give me a reason to trust you. So there are those like varying kind of like ideals and types of people. So it really like, it, it plays into the whole, like, okay, there's individuals who are innately trusting. There's individuals who are innately distrusting. How do they interact? in this confined space. And again, like, we're literally just in this house. We cannot escape. So we're, we're just in front of each other 24 seven, no TV, no internet, no Facebook, no Instagram, no nothing, just each other. So just seeing how those different dynamics like play together and interact, it, it really, it, it shows just how like us being different individuals really shapes how we see the world. Well, Tolu, your character was um, quite controversial. You said you went there to play the game, but for a lot of people, they saw you as the villain sometimes. They saw you as the manipulator sometimes. They saw you as a lot of things, and I'm sure you've gotten a lot of reaction on social media. Oh, so many. <laughs> you know, I was just reading through some of them. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to get my head into this right now. But don't how... read the comments. I know. <laughs> I, I think we should tell people, never read the comments or take them serious. It might get at you. But how are you handling all of that? Because there's always a backstory. I've seen you say, I am the main character for a lot of people they don't understand that. What they see is, why is she doing this now? Why can't you just be the trusting person? Why can't you just be gentle and calm and just be the, you know, happy go fellow kind of person, even though you're very happy, but not, uh, you know, at the detriment of what you feel is right or otherwise. So talk to us about how you've handled all of that negativity and what was the motivation behind your playing that game the way you did? So... Okay, when the show first came out, I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting the amount of backlash that I received. Like I knew I played the game, but I thought people would like notice like, okay, she has some strategy going on. She obviously came with a clear objective. No, they did not see that at all. <laughs> they, I was very maligned in the beginning, I will not lie. And it did. It took up until like the, the second batch of episodes because when the show first came out, it dropped batch by batch. So three episodes, no, four episodes the first week, then three, then two. 
if I'm not mistaken, something like that. So it dropped batch by batch. So that first week, everybody, I, it was like hate Tolu week. And <laughs> I have to say, I'm not gonna lie, it did, it did get to me because I wasn't expecting the amount of backlash that I received. So I did stay in my room for a little bit. <laughs> I was sad, <laughs> but I live with my parents. So mommy and daddy literally had to like come into my room. Mm. Daddy was there praying. He was like, Tolu, you gotta understand, like not everybody is gonna see things the way you do it. Why would you? They're like, you are a lion. Why are you letting the opinions of a sheep like like <laughs> the, the, the cheer you? I was like, you know, you're right. Daddy. I like that. I'm <laughs> Am I letting the opinions of sheep make me feel sad? So thank God that I had that support system in my parents. Like they were always there to just breathe life back into me and pray with me. And like that really got me through that initial dark time. But then afterwards, like as you know, more of the episodes came out, I guess people started to see more of like my gameplay because again, I never hid, I never hid it from the onset. I went in there with a very clear objective, money. That, that, that was my objective. <laughs> like, like the friendship is nice, but at the end of the day, do recognize that these are strangers. I went in there because I wanted to bring home as much money as possible to my family and myself and win a life changing amount of money. And then even as I was playing the game, I think a lot of people, they miss Oh, sorry. A lot of people, they miss like the strategy behind it. Like the individuals that I voted to eliminate, there was clear reasons behind why I voted to eliminate them. I just didn't do anything out of malice or bad belly. Like the first individual <laughs> that I eliminated, like, he, he was lying. He was lying about something. We didn't know what he was lying about. You can't tell me that you trust a person who's lying on the very first meeting. Come on now. So he <laughs> had to get... The second person who got eliminated, he was a millionaire. Why am I going to split $250,000 with somebody that has generational wealth and millions of dollars in the bank? It don't make sense. Like, he, was even, he was even wearing a watch that was $250,000. <laughs> You're wearing it on your wrist and they're telling me I should share with you. It's not making sense. So that one, I had to no, he had to go. And then the third person, if you if you finish the show and I don't wanna ooh, I don't wanna spoil the No your spoilers, right? He had, that person had to go. And if you watch the show, you're going to know why that person had to go. So like there was logic behind every single person I eliminated. I never eliminated anybody just because I was like, well, I'm bored gonna eliminate someone today like but i think people are so caught up in the oh but we all could have just been nice we all could have shared you can't tell me that if you were in a house with strangers that you've never met before and mind you i'm all, like the totality of our duration in that house was three weeks so i didn't know these people for longer than three weeks yeah. if they even stayed that length you're telling me that your devotion to strangers is going to be stronger than your devotion to yourself and your family back home. It, it, it just, it's not, who mm. don't equate in my eyes. So I know a lot of people have things to say about the way that I played the game, but I feel like at the uh, end of the day, I was a player, but I was logical in my reasoning behind it. Is it a, you're the, not a player, you're getting played. Mm, they say don't hit the game. <laughs> Maybe hit the player. Oh, don't hit the player this time. <laughs> oh, hit the that is a hit the player. Uh, but apparently from the record, I think you're about $73,000 richer right now. So you're smiling a lot. And uh, how did you, so with all of this, what you were thinking about people, I'm sure people were thinking about it against you. How did you survive them? They didn't survive you. Like the guy was wearing the $250,000 watch. He couldn't survive you. <laughs> but, but somehow you survived him. How, how did you play that game? Honestly, it's all about like, I am a very personable individual. Like I, I'm really good at, you know, interacting, like making friends. So I was able to build those connections throughout the house and everybody knew me. Like they, they knew who I was like inside. So I was very well liked, that was number one. And then number two, when it comes to how you, I feel like when it comes to how you interact with individuals, you have to learn to be um, what's the word? Adaptable. 
Like you have to learn to be adaptable. You can't interact with everybody the same way. You have to appear to individuals in a way that is going to be receptive to them. So for example, like some people I was real soft with because I know that that's how, that, that's how they feel comfortable around me. Some people I can be more direct with because I understand that that's how they feel comfortable around me. So it's just all about adaptability. You have to kind of be the, be the Tolu that is necessary in that moment. <laughs> if that makes sense. You know, Tolu, watching you is an absolute <laughs> delight. And I'm glad we're having this conversation because we brought out the Niger in you. <laughs> All right. So on a lighter note, I was going through your Instagram page and it's a delight, you know, to watch your videos, by the way. And one of the best things, apart from your $73,000, is that you got a best friend, right? Winnie. Yeah. Okay, so that game you played with Winnie, let's see if we can play some of it. Who was your shadiest on the show? Who would you have loved to bring back on the show? Don't worry, we won't tell anybody, as Kari always says. <laughs> All right, who was the shadiest on the show? Yeah. I feel like that's easy for anybody who watched it. The shadiest on the show for me was Lindsay. Because if anybody watched it, she ended up being backstabbing, conniving, fake, and shady AF. Like, I thought we were girls. Girls don't do that to each other. So definitely the shadiest. Who would you have loved to bring back? Aw, uh, that one was... That one was a no-brainer. It was Winnie. Winnie, yeah. Right. So talk to us about, about Winnie. So Winnie and I... Immediately we saw each other, we just, we clicked, we connected. I, like, she has this big Africa tattoo right here. And me, I don't have any tattoos because I don't want to hear my parents' mouth. But <laughs> I love to wear my like, Africa earrings and Africa necklace because it just, it makes me feel more connected, you know, to, to my culture. And that's why I wear like a lot of, if you notice on the show, I wore a lot of Ankara and lace because it just, it, it makes me feel more connected to you know, being Nigerian. Mm. So I saw Winnie's Africa tattoo. She saw my Africa earrings and immediately we were like, sisters? Oh my gosh. And then it was even crazier. We both found out that we were both from Houston. And mind you, I'd never seen this girl from Adam before the show. And we're both Nigerians, because she's also Nigerian. We're both of Nigerian descent. No way. Living in Texas. Yeah, she's second generation, um, a second generation Nigerian, like born in America, and I'm first gen, born in Nigeria. Tolu, so, uh, uh, so. you just touched on a very important point because this conversation really, aside what you did in the, in, 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 in the, uh, the reality show, is about how you project the African culture. You're, you're quite unapologetic about it. Your outfit uh, from the start of the show was Ankara. It was well styled. One of your earrings is even the African continent anyway. Your hairstyle. The, First, let's even hear you speak Yoruba. Tolu Shogbo Yoruba. Shogbo, Shogbo, me a so dada. You just did. You just did. But, but tell me, so uh, is that, uh, do you see it as, hey, this just makes me like um, superwoman, you know, like Wakanda forever. I carry this, this culture that, that makes me, I don't want to say better, but it's really rich and uh, I have a lot to offer. How do you, how do you really translate the African culture, the richness, how do you translate it into all you do, modeling, acting, and all of that, even though you're not in the environment that is African in that sense? I feel like being in the diaspora, it, it put me in a position where I literally had one foot in both worlds. Like I was too African for Americans. <laughs> I was too American for Africans. Right. So I had to to find my my own identity like okay where do i fit in and even from 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 youth like when we first moved to america i struggled to fit in because like i was so obviously different the way that i spoke was different like i blame my i blame my parents because they speak british english at home so i went to school saying things like trousers and and boots instead of the trunk of a car and <laughs> kids were like what are trousers <laughs> like you know because that's an american terminology so i was i was always like kind of othered i was bullied for being african and it really hurt because it was like this is such a strong part of my identity mm. and so 
when I was young, it was kind of like, you saw a lot of Nigerian and African kids hide the fact that they were African because it wasn't cool here in the States back then. It's cool now, but back then, like when I was growing up, it was not cool. You were like the African booty scratcher or just very stupid things. So you saw a lot of African kids hide that. Like, oh yeah, no, I, I, I'm not African. My parents are, but I'm not African. <laughs> Me, I was always like, when whenever I'm not at school, when I'm back at home, it's Ninja. Mommy, daddy, they always spoke Yoruba. I always spoke Amala. I mean, I always ate Amala, Eba, Inyon. Like, I was taking jollof rice to school. I was in Nigeria when I was back at home. So I had a very strong sense of my culture. And I was like, you know what? And mom, it, even mommy, she told me, because I used to come home crying because I would get bullied a lot. Mommy told me, she was like, Tolu, at the end of the day, who cares? Can you change the fact that you're Nigerian? I was like, no, I can't. They're like, do you hate the fact that you're Nigerian? I was like, no, I don't. So why do you care? Why are you crying? All right. You should just be proud. Be prouder because they're only making fun of you because they see something that they do not have. And I was mm. like, you're mm. so right, mom. And then from there, from there, I was like, you know what? I don't care. I will be the African booty scratcher. That's fine. I am so, I'm so proud of where I come from. I'm so proud of my heritage. And that's why I wear it on my sleeve. That's why I wear it in my ears. That's why I wear it on my, on my chest. Right? All right. <laughs> because I love the fact that I'm African, that I'm Nigerian. It's a beautiful culture. And even so, like, for example, my, my first name is actually Evelyn. And that's what they called me in school. But I feel more akin to Tolu Lokbe, because that's my middle name. I feel more akin to that. I was like, and daddy gave me that name because he said, one day my child is going to go to America and I want her friends to be, I want her friends to be able to pronounce her name without complication. And it, uh, it was, it was beautiful and they did. But after I left school, after I graduated college and I entered the corporate world, and mind you, at home, everybody calls me Tolu. The only people who call me Evelyn are like, like, like Americans, people in school or at work. And I was like, if they can pronounce Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, what's stopping them from pronouncing Tolu? So, okay. I honestly, I was like, at that point, I, right, I am, I'm saying my name, yes. Okay, yeah, it's, it's just interesting to watch you talk. That's why we're just looking at you. Yeah, it's, 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 it's quite exciting to see how you were able to hack that, um, what they consider cultural offense, you know. Uh, you're neither here uh, nor there, but you have to tell them, yeah. this is who I am at the end of the day. But you've been saying my parents, my mother, my, tell us about them. I did a typical African Nigerian parent. I would say they are... They're the upgraded Nigerian <laughs> parents. Like, very typical, but at the same time, I want to say they're like Ninja Parent 2.0. Ninja <laughs> Parent from Max. <laughs> that's, that's what they are. What does like, that mean? They're so, <laughs> so, okay, they're typical in the sense of, you know, like how all Ninja parents have the same kind of playbook, like, oh, go to school, no boyfriend until you're married. Um, well, I was top of my grade. I trekked 17 miles to go to school. Like, they, were, they were that. But then at the same time, <laughs> like, you know how a lot of people, they say like, oh, you know, Nigerian parents, if you're not a doctor, lawyer, engineer, they, you're just a disgrace to the family. Like, my parents were never like that. They were always like, Tolu, we trust, we trust you and we trust where God is taking you. So whatever you feel like you want to do, go ahead and do it. And they have always been supportive of every endeavor that I went to. Like, even when I started university, I went in there like, I'm going to be a doctor. So I went as a bio biochem major. I took biosciences one and said, you know what? It's not everybody that needs to be a doctor. It's not everybody that needs to be a doctor. So I took yeah. myself business. <laughs> All right. All right, so Mama. thumbs up, thumbs up to 2.0 parents, Niger parents in, the, in America great, great. and in the United Kingdom. But there are some friends that you have backstage who will not let us rest if you, they don't hear where you're from. I know we've asked you earlier where you're from. Uh, uh, well, if you states. spoke Yoruba. She's Yoruba. But I'm going to ask you in Yoruba now. Um, I will say it in English first. Where are you from? Omo Lubonietolu. Ibadan. 
<laughs> you didn't say it in Yoruba. <laughs> I can speak it, but I speak it so bad they're gonna make fun of me. <laughs> Tolu. Uh, <laughs> I sound like it. <laughs> oh my bad John. You know, it, it's it's been such a uh, a, a pleasure speaking with you, Tolu, and um, we wish you the very best. We know there are great things, uh, even greater things coming for you. And yeah, you need to recognize it will come with some of those negativities sometimes. But I'm glad you have a good support system. You have a good mindset to approach this. So, Tolu, thank you so much for your time on the morning brief. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to having a chat with you uh, again. Uh, we'll be speaking with uh, Tolu Lopwe. Kondari, you've seen her in that uh, reality TV show, The Trust, uh, one over $70,000. That's a rich woman you're seeing right <laughs> <Yes> there. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony, wish you the very best. Please catch some sleep. We know you had to stay up uh, to have this conversation <laughs> with us. All right. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. It's quite a delight to talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Awesome. So much energy from her. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you just keep listening to her. Okay, let her just keep talking. Amazing, really? amazing. It's not just the energy, it's the Nigerian spirit. Yeah. She's in, really unapologetic. Um, a second generation Nigerian American. Amazing. Beautiful. Oh, so uh, well the phone is just getting started on the show this morning. It's Friday. Let's let's Chill. relax. Okay, it's been a long week, really. So we'll go to break now. When we return, you know that back pain you've been complaining about? Well, there are ways around it, there are ways to manage it through exercise. There are different levels to this. So stay with us right here. We're changing very soon and you see the exercise in us coming out in a moment. Stay with us. the morning brief and this is you know where it gets interesting you know easy does it on friday you know we just let down our air on friday speaking of which that back pain that you've been complaining about you know exercise is not about not just about physical fitness it's also therapeutic where you have pain so our ever dependable coach coach beauty musa joins us yet again, yet again this friday to take us through uh, some routines that can help us cure the pain some people by my left they also experience pain sometimes you know at the back so this is very good for them <laughs> i don't know who am i talking about let's wel welcome coach beauty musa to the program coach beauty welcome to the morning brief welcome i'm happy to, to be here day. always thank so you we're going through um, you'd prefer not to call it yoga you'd rather call it what i call it pilates our our I'd rather use the word Pilates because um, the, this, um, the yoga, people actually attribute religious into it. That way they are doing the harm, harm, harm. <laughs> we don't want to do harm. Hum, hum, okay. We just want to get rid of this pain. So we're in safety zone. Yes, we're in safety zone. So zones. how important is it in curing back pain? It's not just back pain now. There are people who also have pain in other areas of their body, you know, yes. sometimes on the knee. So does that work for it as well? It works for general inflammation, general pains. Yeah. You know, people tend to build up um, pains as a result of um, 
poor posture position, especially some of this. We talked about it last time when we talked about standing and sitting position. And then most people hunch over their computers and then most people spend so much time while on computers. And because of that, you tend to have these um, um, pains between the lower neck and the upper neck. And then sometimes unconsciously, you just end up seeing yourself doing this unconsciously. The body wants to take care of itself because you're straining, you've put so much strain on the neck muscles. So yoga stretches, we call it, like I said, we call it Pilates, are actually very, very good for people that are always um, spending so much time with their computers so that it can help rid of the pains around their lower and upper um, back pains and the, the neck areas. I know you had some uh, advisory you want to give to certain people with certain conditions. Uh, you talked about it, so maybe this is time to share. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, most pains usually come as a result of illness and then some of them come as a result of um, maybe accident so you always before you um, join in any pilates stretches please see your doctor rule out all illnesses and everything be sure that you're on a straight line before you go ahead to do any stretch at all so make sure you see your doctor before engaging in any form of stretches at all mm. all right so so it's also mm. important to say once mm. Even if you're engaging in those stretches, you start feeling a funny pain, stop right there. Exactly. Stop right there. Yeah. So that um, sometimes the pain is like, oh, you are stretched, but you know those pains. They mm. just come and you're like, nah, this is beyond be careful. Mm, so yeah. please, mm. it's important. Important <laughs> advisory there. Yeah. So how do we start our routine? How do we get so started? We're going to start by, like I've this, always this said. This is yours, right? Yeah, I'm so using this is the mine. So can I go to mine? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Everybody can go to their mine. This is mine. So, yeah. So, like I've always said, always okay. do a form of warm-up before engaging in any form of exercises. This is going to help to prevent muscular strain. Okay, take it up and move it down. So, I need you to just stretch a bit sideways. Yeah, good. And then take it to the other side. Oh, wow. And that's good. All right. I feel okay. that. Arms, yes. Yeah, exactly. On my arms. Exactly. I'm learning from you. <laughs> exactly. Now, pull it down. Just stretch it backwards. Good. Ooh. Good. And then come up. Yeah. And take it down. All right. So we are going, going to sit on the mat. You sit on your mat. Okay. I've always said there's no excuse. Don't give okay. excuses whenever you're on okay. this um, regiment. Oh, wow. Don't give excuses. Oh, wow. Okay. You can do it anywhere. You can do it wearing I any clothes. I'm not supposed to wear anything. This so. way. Right now, yes, this is the proper position. Now, I need you to place your arms on your knees, and then I need you to breathe in and chest out, okay? And then breathe out, good. Now, I need your chin up. Make sure your chin is not touching your chest, okay? Now, just take it up. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Good, now, I need you to just take your arms up, white chesting out. You know, this exercise doesn't just take care of back pains. It also has a way of helping you to work your core. Yeah, I feel that on my spine. Yeah, it works on your core and then you feel it on your spine because it's working. Yeah, and then I take it down. Now you're gonna place this hand down here. Take your arms up and stretch it. You feel all Ooh. the pains going out. My legs are shaking. Yeah. But make sure you place your leg in such a way that you're not having pains. If you're having pains, change positions, okay? Change to the other side. Take it up and stretch it. Good. 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 Beautiful. So what does that do to the spine? What does it do? Okay, it's actually reducing inflammation. Place okay. your arms on your, on your knees again and chin up. No, Buki, that's I, I, too high up, okay? Okay, <laughs> because I was feeling it on my chin. Yeah. And breathe out. All right, now you're going to leave one of the legs folded. Stretch one out this way, okay? Okay, stretch fold it. Out. I need you to take your arms up. Stretch. Like that. And then try to reach for your toes. Oh, boy. You feel that? This, this, is, a day, not this is a tall order. <laughs> this guy is stretching. I am actually. He is stretching. You feel that relief around that back area. <laughs> yeah. Good. My hands have refused to get there. Hands up. Okay, and I got there. take it down. Go at your pace. Wherever your hands can reach, you stop there. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. That was beautiful. Now change oh. the other leg. Stretch it out. <laughs> stretch it out that way. How do you move oh. up? Oh, my God. Okay, same yeah. thing, right? 
I think I, I wasn't looking at Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, Jeff, I'm good. No, we are not doing that yet. Okay, Straight. now stretch arms out this way. Yeah. Just stretch it out. Good. Two, three, four, and five. Now, Let's reach go. your toes and hold it there. Uh, women are more flexible than men. No? <laughs> Remember that you can join us at home, even though advisedly, um, if you don't have express instructions, uh, from your head or Ooh. therapist. Now, fold it in. You may just want, have to do this minimally. Yes, please. And then now we are going to work on the neck areas. Now you're going to twist, um, turn your face, looking at behind of your shoulders. Okay, like this. Behind, beautiful. You got it, Jeff. That's it. But Jeff, I need your chin up. Okay. Beautiful. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tune to, turn to the other <laughs> side. You're trying to look at behind of your shoulders. Good. Good. All right. Now, face forward. Now, you're going to turn your head clockwise. Just rotate it. Down. And up. One. Down. And up. Two. Just three times. Down. Uh, I need to see Jeff. <laughs> Why is she laughing? <laughs> turn to the other Some side. Some people are making now, me laugh from the back end. Turning <laughs> anti-clockwise. Okay, anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Now, one. Just three times. Okay, I like this one. Two anti clockwise. Coach Musa. So, when do you do this? In the morning or in the evening? In the afternoon? When is the best time to do in this? In the mornings, preferably in the mornings. Take your arms up. Coach Beauty. Yes, sis. This punishment is not going to be for us alone. But Those at the back end must go through this. But this also. is relieving. It is. Uh, it, is. it must be evenly so distributed. Forward. Oh my okay, God, Jeff. Like Down together. Oh, nice. Good. Three, four, five, and take it up. I love it. Take it up yeah. and make sure you're chasing out. Yeah, okay, that's it. And uh, beautiful. Now you're going to place one arm on top of the other, okay? Like that. Like this. this. Yeah, you got All right. it. You got it. Now this works on your core, the back area. So you also twist one, two, three, four, four five. five. Make sure you tighten your stomach. Six. six because that okay. way you're working on your stomach muscles. Also. also. Yes. Eight, nine, Ten. And um, all of the arms are working, by the way. Yes. As you do that. Working your total body now. Chest out. Chin up. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Now I need you to put your legs together this way. Okay. I'm going to be staying sideways so that people can get. Okay. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Beautiful. Like this. Yeah. Now you're going to chest out. You can see my back is so straight. Where, where, where are we supposed to hold your knee? You're, hold, Please hold your knees okay. in front of your knees, okay? All right. Now, chin up. One, two, three, four. What does this do? And five. Like I said, we are curbing the pains of your back neck and your general back areas, okay? Now, I need you to place your arms behind there. Then you're going to drop both knees on the side. Right. Yeah. Right. So how drop do you place your hands at the back? Your hands sure. are flat on the floor. Okay. Behind you, just drop both knees. Oh, bookie baby. I need you to drop it down there. Okay. You got it. Now, chest out. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, you're going to drop it. Why does this pose look funny, though? <laughs> you look like a seductive on the pose. Other side. You know, next One. time, we should just do a dance routine. Oh, look at bookie. Bookie is looking beautiful. The pose is good. Exactly. We should three. do a dance routine on Friday instead. We should women do this alone. And five. All right, come up. And place your arms on your knees again. Chin <laughs> up. One, two, three, four, four and five. five. Coyote, I need both arms up this way. You're going to drop it down. Okay. Like this? Like you're relaxing. Oh, like good. This. Jeff, I'm sure you, you felt that relief, right? Yeah. Now just take this other arm up. Coyote. This way, right? Yeah. yeah, up there. Good. One. Okay. Two. So this also works for the back pain. We are relieving the back areas, all the inflammation there. We are relieving everybody, every bit of it. All right, that was good. Now we are changing to the other side. So you're going to twist and then just take it down there. Okay, you got it. That's it. Well done, Jeff. You got it. Stretch your arms up and chest out. And chest the knees out. are still up. They're yes, not of resting. Of course, they're okay. not resting. Two, three, four, and five. Come up again on your knees. Hold them there. Hold them there and chest out. Two, three, four, and five. five. Then let's fold our knees again and face forward. One. You're still chesting out, okay? Chesting. Two. Just three. 
That goes four, to the spine. Five, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now you're going to stretch your legs in front of you. Bring one knee in front. I'm oh, sure. Nice. Okay. I'm sure Kaude will like this one because <laughs> it looks beautiful. I think Kaude wants beauty. This is better. Uh -huh. This is better. This Jeff. is better than that. <laughs> Now you're going uh, well, to cross it and drop I, I it. I can relate. It's drop more it, comfortable. Drop it to the other side. Okay. You got it. Now you're going to take the opposite arm. Put it on your knees. Drop this hand. You got it. Now chest out. What? Uh, Jeff, how do you Jeff. come up with these routines? Like Look at the left. Okay. Okay. Like they, they are all when you're into um, a trade for a long time. Of course, you 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 upgrade yourself. You update. Okay. You learn. You you know. Okay. This looks like it. photographic pose. Okay. Now, <laughs> you're changing <laughs> to the other leg. Drop it. Pick up this other one. Okay. Yeah. Take it up. While that one is stretched out. Yes. While that one this is stretched This is this way. Yeah. Okay. Now, take it up and cross it. Cross it. Right. You're taking your other arms, Jeff. Like this? Yes. Drop this one drop down. Drop Put this on your knees yeah. and then... You look good. up. Uh, chest out. One, two... Three. Is anyone taking pictures? Somebody's come and take pictures, okay. uh, producer. <laughs> Six. I cannot waste this pose. Okay. Your hand is on your this, knees. This moment is historic. Okay. Put your, your hands hand on your knees. Your hand on, on your, your knees. elbows should be on that. Uh, producer okay. should come this and way. take this. Yeah. Exactly. You got that. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Fold it. Fold your knees Whoa. again inwards and hold it. Can we repeat that, Coach Two. Moses? It was an iconic pose. It was. An yeah. iconic routine. <laughs> Maybe not for men. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten. Put your legs together and squeeze inwards. Oh, squeeze squeeze inwards. inwards. Two, three. With your chest With out, right? With the chin raised, yes, chest out. Your chest out. Uh, yeah. Chest in up, yeah. Good. Four and five. Again, look towards behind of your shoulders. Mm hmm Hold it there for five seconds. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, and to, to the other side. One, two, three, four. And that's it. We are done for today. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, Aqua. Uh, awesome. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, I did well today, man. Accelerating. Well, <laughs> Nobody's tired. <laughs> Nobody's tired. I'm back. <laughs> I'm so, adopted. But I absolutely so, enjoyed this, I, I must I, I, say. I, I, yes. It's very so relieving. How often how do you often do this? Do your stretches every day, even if it's for 30 seconds. Every day? 30 every seconds. We, uh, Coach Musa. You will, wait, there's something you do in the morning when you wake up. Uh, you notice unconsciously when you wake up, you do like... Mm, ah, yeah. The body wants it every day. All right. So okay. even if it's for five seconds, do a stretch. All right. Yes. Okay. But so what about this um, intense routine? How often can you do it? This kind of intense. This kind of intense yes. routine. Minimum, you add it to your exercise regimen, which is three times weekly. Three times. Minimum weekly. three times weekly. After a full class, even if it's least, 15, 20 minutes, yeah. do your stretches. At least we're going to leave the show for today, relaxing and enjoying. Although our producer was supposed to join us, she went to wear Ankara, <laughs> so there's no way to call her. She's been on us, but. But it's okay. I want it's to thank Friday, you so bro. Yeah, I want to, we need to take some of the, the, the comments that yes, are coming, yes, particularly okay. uh, about the um, the NIN BVN conversation. Yeah, and, uh, I said this one. This one is from Oreolua Ojodubega, saying that uh, the security angle of this NIN linkage should be looked into, and that's because uh, there are many people using details belonging to others, and for him, says it was. Uh, hijacked uh, by the street vendors, put the number there uh, when he wanted to retrieve his line, saying it now belongs to some person uh, with all his details. Uh, that's Aurelua from Bojodubega. And I think a lot of people have raised that point. Uh, they buy at the same, they use it for a few months and then call, try to call the line and they hear someone else speaking about it. So mm. these are Nigerians talking about this. We have this one from Apollos Musa as well, uh, Joss Plateau State, saying, uh, your guests in the studio should be told that it's not laziness in some cases, late information from banks is i tried using online uh i, I, tr oh, I tried linking online that's from apollo smusa to my name many times and every time i was charged 20 naira per attempt and all i get is response pass error and i think we talked about that and uh, i guess was saying essentially there's a lot of pressure on that system so there's a conversation around infrastructure uh, as well but yes the banks absolutely take this on board and ensure that we have a seamless process.
<laughs> you know, I can relate with um, Aurel Lua's uh, comments. You know, sometimes when you do registration, um, or if you haven't registered and you go to do registration, uh, the network has registered your line in somebody else's name. So the networks also need to address that as well. All right, almost thank Coach Musa. Thank you so much for this exercise. We thank you for all this coming through for us, guys. Uh, Coach Musa will always be back whenever we need her. So she's right here. Uh, well, I did well today. I must say, yes, I told Fantastic. myself I would do well. <laughs> we all did well. But <laughs> well, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you for being part of the program. Of course, uh, it's a Friday edition. We'll be back again on Monday. I'm Jeffrey Uzoma. Yes, yes. The morning brief redefining presentation, sitting down. <laughs> and we're committing, we're getting Coach Musa to commit to a dance routine next week or sometime very soon. Join us again next week. I am Bukola Koka. And I'm Kado Kikil. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Let's get this on the road. Yeah.